So at what point is the patience done? A lot of times they will deny that they're wrong. They'll deny that they're sinning. Um, I've known I've known couples that uh, they are in an unscriptural marriage, or they get into an unscriptural marriage, and they're talked to about it, and they say, well, if you think I'm going to separate from them, you... no, it's not going to happen. Well, what do you do? They're refusing to repent. They're refusing to correct that sin. Very obvious. Yes. Right. There are others that are less obvious. Mm-hmm. If, if, if it's known, huh? There's no way for you to know that that's the thing that's going Yeah, happen. yeah. There, there are certain things that you can You can judge very discernibly, like the example that you gave, or someone that is divorcing their wife or their husband for no other reason than they just want a divorce, and they refuse not to do that. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, that is very open, and they're not repentant. Um, there are other things that you you're making guesses and and that's that's not what you need to be doing. Um, the things that you can see that somebody is doing and, and if you talk to them several times, you've taken other members to talk to them, brought it up before the congregation, and they refuse to quit doing those things, then you have a clear pattern of when that is that is to occur. Judges of somebody's heart, but we don't really truly know. I, I'll give you an example. There were many times I would miss Wednesday night Bible study uh, when I lived over in Val Rico, and it wasn't because I was had, didn't want to be at Wednesday night Bible study. It's just I would I had had it once where I was and I get to talk to somebody about the Bible, and I actually had somebody correct me one time, which got me into that habit of missing Bible study, who was a fellow Christian because he happened to be there with me. Um, and I was like, I've got to go to church. You guys, we, we're sitting here talking to this person about the Bible. We don't need to be in church. We're sitting here talking to this person about the Bible. So, to, to make a judgment about me saying that I am forsaking the assembly, right. that would have been wrong. Yeah. Um, so, there, there are things that you can talk to a person about. If they tell you what's going on, then that's that's what it is. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you just have to trust that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So um, now there are obvious things, like we've already discussed, where they will not repent of that thing or correct themselves of that thing. Then we have a clear guide of what we are to do in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't know a person's heart, you know, and, and there's a lot of people that you know, they sin but it's it's private and there's no way we would know. Right? Unless they come out and confess that, you know, I'm doing this and I'm not gonna repent of it. But yeah, so it, it's those public sins that is is out there. So if you go to somebody, you confront them one on one as as Jesus commands, you know, go to that, that person and they don't listen to you. And then you take two or three people, still don't listen, and then you bring it before the church. Now the church gets involved, and the church is trying to... So it's not like it's a you're sinning, we're withdrawing kind of thing, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process, right? And if they're not going to listen to the church, you know, then the church has to withdraw. Now does that, that... Some people get confused. They think withdrawing means they can't come through those doors again, and that's not what that means. Withdrawing from somebody does not mean you are banned from ever coming here and worshiping with us. That is not, that is so far from the truth, right? The same physical location has nothing to do with Exactly. no longer part of the body of Christ that meets here. Exactly. Anything that has to do with worship service, they can't have anything to do with Right. So you're not going to have that person get up and lead a prayer. They're not going to get up and lead singing. They're not going to get up and serve on the table. They're not going to take part in that. You know, they can still come and worship. And, and, and you hope and you still encourage them to repent of that sin and hopefully they will 
And when they repent of that sin, guess what you do? You forgive them and you welcome them back in, right? But so many times people get this idea that the discipline, withdrawing from somebody is, or, you know, we hear disfellowship, you know, that, that word, that that means, well, I can't come back. That's not what that means at all. Any thoughts? It's not an easy thing to do. It, it really isn't. Um, again, it, 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 the church, the, the church needs to, to, to do what God has commanded us to do, you know, and, and if, if we're commanded to mark an individual because of the sin that is in their life, then, then we have to do that. It is a responsibility to withdraw from those who refuse to repent. Why does the church practice this discipline? Why, why, why do we do this? Well, to some, the act of withdrawing from the disorderly, again, seems like it's an unloving action. You're supposed to be about love, and, and you're telling this person that they're, they're no longer considered a member of this congregation? That's not love. Well, actually, it is love. <laughs> you do it out of love. Right? Just like punishment of a child. Right? You have that instructive correction, uh, correction that we talked about. And now that they know, and now they're going to disobey, now you have that corrective discipline. There's that punishment. You don't do it because you don't like the child. You don't do it you know, out of hatred for that child. You do it out of love for that child. Why? Because you don't want them to do it again. You want them to learn from the mistake that they've made. And that it's the same thing with the, cho uh, with the church. And so first, you know, first of all, as we mentioned, it is a command of the Lord. The things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. He says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 37. Writing the commandments of the Lord, he said, but we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. If there were no other reason to withdraw from this, this, the disorderly, the fact that it is a command of the Lord, that, that alone is enough. That is alone. It is a command of the Lord. We have to do it. He doesn't have to give another reason. He says, I command you to do this. Well, okay. We, we have to do it. You know, he doesn't have to go and give us every little detail. You know, he, this is what I command, and so you have to do it. <clears throat> and so another reason is to make the erring brother that refuses to repent ashamed. That is what it is meant to do. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6, uh, go ahead and look at that. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. He says it again, or we read this earlier. This punishment by the majority is sufficient for that person, All right? So once again, they are to be ashamed. If anyone does not obey your word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. That's Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 14. They are to be ashamed. Again, withdrawing is a punishment, as we just read. Punishment is sufficient for them. And the shame that it brings to the sinner is intended to move them to repent of that sin. Again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. Note that person. Mark that person. Do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Now, what does it mean to not keep company with him? What, what does that mean? Right. Exactly. Come on over. Let's hang out. Let's watch a movie. Let's play some games. No, that's... <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? Now, again, this is where some people get it wrong. They say, or they think that you can't have communication with that person at all. Again, that is not the case. That is so far from the truth. 
you still want to encourage them. You still want them to be convicted that they are, are a sinner, that there's sin in their life, and that they need to come to repentance. But you don't do that by acting like everything is okay and not bringing it up. You can't do that. Again, a child, it's the same thing. If you let a child, you know, if, if you, you're going to be punished if you do this, and they do it, and you don't punish them, and, uh, and you do it again, and then there's no punishment, and then it just keeps going and going and going, right? You're not, you're not getting anywhere with that child. They're just going to think, hey, I can just keep doing this. So if you have someone who is sinning, and they're refusing to repent of that sin, and now you're just hanging out with them like you're, you're good friends, you are relaying to them that everything's okay. Jim? on what you're saying, if you go to verse 15, it says, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Mm -hmm. So you keep talking to him and encourage him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, you want to stay in contact. You want to keep encouraging them. But the fact that they're not invited to the potlucks anymore, the fact that they're not invited to our house anymore, that, you know, they'll start maybe to feel ashamed and they miss you know, the, the, their family, and sometimes they do come back, sometimes they don't. And you know what happens sometimes, and this is where we need to be careful. We need to be careful as a congregation. If somebody comes here and they want to become a part of this congregation at Lake Wales, how do we know, unless we talk with them, and maybe do a little bit of I'll say investigation. How do, what, what if they've been withdrawn from, from another congregation because they're sinning? And what do people do when they don't like what's it? They'll leave and go somewhere else. And now we've got somebody who's been withdrawn from because they're sinning in their life, and we're like, come on in here. And now they're starting over, right? Nobody knows the sin that I've been doing, so I'll just hide myself in the middle of Lake Wales here, Right? I have no problem. Where did you, where, what church did you come from? Are you, oh, you came from Claremont. Okay, let me call Barry Hudson, the preacher over there. Right, let me talk to him. See, you know, he's also an elder over there. You know, and, and, and get kind of a, a background. Right, because you don't want to accept, what, what if this person that we accept here caused division over there? And now we're accepting somebody who, so we, we've got to be careful, again, that we don't get so caught up in the numbers that we, we overlook some things. We do not want somebody coming in here that has caused division in other congregations. Because what do you think they're going to do here? Probably going to cause division here too. Right? So we've got to be careful. Any thoughts on that? They said, you mind if we call the, the congregation? We, yeah, go right ahead. I, I don't care. You know, call. Ask about me. Uh, Patty? I was just going to say, um, every congregation I've ever been a member of, the elders um, always did that. They checked on. Yep. Usually we would write a letter. But, I mean, this was a long time ago. But yeah. Before Facebook. Um, and also sometimes they would give the member who was moving and, and going to another congregation, give them a letter of um, approval of what, um, what, what the word is, the recommendation, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I've been on the receiving end of that. Uh, I remember uh, Henderson, I started attending there for a little while, and it was when Bob Walker was a Christian there, and I ended up in the back room with him and the other elders for almost an hour and a half to it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. It's great. But it, 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 
never, I had never had somebody probe me in, in that much detail uh, before. Mm -hmm. I never, you know, I, I had had the, you know, other congregations pull me aside and talk to me for a few minutes. But that was a full, we're going to meet with you for a couple hours and find out about you. So, yeah, yeah uh, that, it, that is a, a function of the eldership that I have seen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they shepherd the flock. Yeah. They look out for the flock. Yeah, what was that term? Oh, I thought you said something. Something about persons being vetted. Yeah. Commented, That's this modern term for checking them out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're absolutely right. But what really encourages people to change is the love. My dad called it tough love. Yeah. So, like, for instance, my mom was not alcoholic. So, we were true. She knew she was loved, but we had to withdraw from that situation until there was changed behavior, and that caused repentance. Um, but it's really important for the person that we're doing that they really understand how loved they are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's Everything is always done out of love, right? E even even withdrawing. You don't want to do it in anger. Or you do it in love. And time equals the love. I'm sorry? Time equals the yes. love that you put in with people. Right. right. If you don't know much about the person, you really got to know and be invested. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then, number three, to take away sin from among the church. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1 and 2, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. So it's, they're there. And such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife, and you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. And so again, sin among the members that is tolerated and left unchecked for extended periods of time it, it, is, is not good. It is not good, it, and it causes problems. And problems, you know, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, right? If you, don't, if you don't nip it in the bud, if you don't take care of that problem, it progressively gets worse and worse and worse. Russ? It jumps out at me he makes the point that the immorality that these people, that this person is practicing, is looked down on by even the Gentiles. <laughs> yeah. It should be looked down by you. By you. Mm -hmm. It should not be overlooked by you, the church, the body of Christ. Even the Gentiles, the people that are not in the body of Christ, don't think that this is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not doing anything about it. Uh, it's always jumped out at it as, what, 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 what's going on with your congregation <laughs> Yeah. So, but then you get to second Corinthians, and this is the correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, finish this up uh, next, well, no, next week's the first Sunday in a couple weeks. And then uh, we'll move into uh, a different topic for the end of the year, and then we'll, we'll start something in uh, January.